G'day guys and welcome to the lab and to this our 10th lesson in the uh, Wolfenstein 3D Godot tutorial. So what we're up to in this one is we're going to make some collectibles so we can pick up ammo and we're also going to update our HUD so that that uh, shows us our ammo count in real time. So let's have a look at our WWSS. Well, so far most of our basic gameplay is now implemented. We've got a world, we've got a player, we've got enemies, we've got combat, we've got death. So we are on the right track. What are we doing in this lesson? Well, we are sorting out our ammunition collectibles. We're going to be able to start picking up little ammo packs as we wander around our castle. Why? Well, ammunition is actually a really good way to manipulate player difficulty, but also we just need a way of getting ammo, don't we? Skills you'll need where well, you're going to have to understand and apply how to create new scenes as well as a new script. And success in this lesson, you're going to be able to collect ammo drops and see your ammo in your HUD. Before we get into making our collectible, there was something I noticed about our guard's behaviour that was quite annoying. And that was it doesn't seem to be able to re-aim after it's taken aim. So basically, once it stops to shoot at you, you can just walk away. Um, not ideal, though that does emulate perhaps uh, some stormtroopers and whatnot that we've seen in movies in the past, but we're going to fix that instead. So come into your guard script, get down to your attack function, and just here, after we've got if distance to player is greater than attack range, we're saying return. After that return, make a little bit of space, get rid of the else here, and this is where we're going to actually work in a new function. So, well, a new variable and what have you is actually what we're doing here. So what the idea is, is that we want to be able to make sure that we can um, have a look and find where our uh, player is after they've moved. We don't want our guard to just be stuck there shooting in the one direction after we move away, which I think is fair enough. So return, that's excellent. Da, 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 that's fine. Uh, oh, the is attacking here has got to get a little bit of a fix up because we got rid of the, um, the else. So that's just meant that I've got to change some of the rest of this here as well, I feel. That one's probably to there, that one to there, that one to there. There we go. All right, so what we've done is we've added in this little block here. We've removed the else, which just meant we had to rearrange some of our tabs because we were changing the structure. But this is what it looks like now in our attacking function. So function attack, and that's the bulk of it there. So you can see all we've done is added in this block of code in the middle to re-aim. So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to get done just to make sure that you know, you're not making your game too easy for yourself by having these bugs. Um, save that, always a good process. Um, and once you've got that saved, what we might wanna do is jump over into our, uh, our UI and have a look at that first. This is what our UI looks like at the moment. In our last one, we did these health uh, and label and all that sort of stuff. And really what we're doing today for the ammo is very, very similar to what we did for that. So what we actually want to do is duplicate. Um, we want to duplicate both of these. Oh, what am I doing? Let's just uh, copy and paste them in. So we don't want it to be a child. Um, and we also want to um, copy the label as well and we don't want that to be a child either so we've got health 2 and label 2 what we're going to do with those is let's rename health 2 to be ammo and label 2 can stay as label 2 but let's start working with label 2 so click on label 2 come across to our inspector and let's change it from saying health to saying ammo like that um, we want our horizontal to be center Vertical can be top, that's all fine like that. Um, and for our ammo, let's have a look at what we've got there. Remember, we're going to set the text for this one in our um, code, so don't worry about that. Um, center, center, that's all okay. Let's actually get our 2D view on the screen now. So what's actually happened is when we've duplicated these, they've just kind of given them a standard offset. But in our actual um, Wolfenstein, the ammo appears to the side of the um, health like that, I believe. So something like that. Actually, I think that goes like that, like that. All right, and the ammo one, where's that down there? So let's line that up as well. Something like this, yeah. So get that lined up there, get that lined up there, like that. All right, so we need to sort out some code though now, don't we? So we've got our health and our ammo, but we need to sort out the code for these. So it's all well and good to put them there. It doesn't do anything though. So go back to our script, just come down to the bottom here. And this one here that we've got, um, function update health label, let's copy that and let's just use that as our uh, template, right? Except instead of health label, what are we going to update? We're going to update the ammo label. What's 
going to need to change. We're going to have to change this to be ammo. So what we've done so far, we've renamed it from update health label to update ammo label. We've changed the, um, the thing that we're grabbing. So remember how we do that. We could literally just grab that and drag it over like that, or we can type it in. So ammo text, but this here is going to be wrong. So we don't want to get the parent, like we're not grabbing info for ammo from the player because our ammo is actually stored globally and that's even easier. So ammo.txt equals string and we can just go global.ammo because that's what we called it like that. Save it and that should mean that our HUD is all now set up so that we can get our ammo information in there. Why don't we test that one and see how that goes first? But first we should probably actually call that function, shouldn't we? So down here we've created a new one called update ammo label. Remember with our health one we put it in, we've got to do the same thing here otherwise it won't actually show us anything. Update ammo label and open and close brackets. All right, let's save that. Let's run it. And there is our uh, ammo. I'm getting shot at by lots of people and I'm gonna die. I died. All right, but you could see that it was working. Okay, so that's that bit st um, sorted out. Why don't we have a look now at actually making our ammo collectible? And we're gonna do that by starting by creating a new scene. So to create a new scene, you come up to our top here, we click on the plus, and we're gonna use the route for this scene as an area 3D. So click on other node and search for area 3D, not 2D. Area 3D, there we go. Now an area 3D is gonna give you a warning because you need to have collision shapes and stuff, but we'll get to that, all right. So what we're gonna use is similar to what we did with our guards. So we're gonna add a new node and this is gonna be a sprite and it's gonna be a sprite 3D. Our sprite 3D is gonna have our um, image that we're gonna work with. All right, so let's rename our area 3D to just be ammo now so we don't forget. And let's give it our, uh, its collision shape. So when we've got the, um, the root node selected, click on plus, Look for a collision shape 3D, excellent. Now let's jump over to our um, file explorer so we can drag in our new resources because we need a new resource for this one. So you can uh, get it from the OneNote, you can get it from itch, you can get it from GitHub, um, but you want the uh, wolfitems.png is the one we're gonna use, wolf items. And once we've dragged that into our file explorer, which is uh, under me, hang on, oops, drag the wrong bit off the screen. If I drag myself up here, you can see our wolf items down here. And what all we're going to do is grab it, drag. Oh gosh, I've got the wrong thing selected. Hang on, hang on. Select your Sprite 3D. So you can see that texture up there. Then drag wolf items over into that. Let me move my head down again. Oops, keep doing the wrong thing. I'll get confused if I have myself up too high over there. All right, so now over here, we've got our texture. Let's click on our animation. And here we can set how big our Sprite strip is. Well, our H frames are actually four. Um, the rest of that can stay. But if we now go and have a look in our 3D view, so da, 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 click on our 3D view, there it is there, but it's teeny tiny and there's a few things we need to fix. So come down to our transform down here, node 3D transform, where we've got our position, our Y, we're gonna wanna set that to 0.9. Um, it's going to look like it's in the middle of the air for now, but that's because we're going to set our scale to be three and now it sort of lines up on the floor. Now that gives us a reasonable sized one, but we still want to make sure that um, like with our guards, it's always facing us. So where we've got flags up towards the top, click on that and then billboard, click on disabled and click on Y billboard. And that way it means it's always going to look at us. And you can actually see that as we move around just in our 3D view here, that the ammo satchel is always looking at the player or the camera, all right? So that's our uh, satchel of ammo. Now our collision shape needs to be done. So click on your collision shape node over on the left, come over to the right and click on empty. And then we're probably gonna use a capsule. That's always a good bet, isn't it? Drag, oops, drag it up so it's at about ground level. Um, make it so it's not too giant. Um, something like that maybe, how big's that? Yeah, that's all right. Um, maybe make it a bit sort of wider. All right, so remember we don't um, look up and down in Wolfenstein, so we need to make sure that it's big enough that it's not too hard to collect things as well. So I'm just making this shape a little bit bigger as well, I think, just to make sure that there's um, the ability to find it without uh, walking around and around in circles. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna save that as ammo.scene, of course, and now we're gonna give it a script. So click back on your root node, click on the script thingamajig, and then click on create and that takes us in here. We don't need to do much here though at all though. So we actually don't even need a ready function, get rid of that one altogether. And what we wanna do is we wanna signal our area 3D to this script. So if you have your area 3D clicked on in your, uh, in your node list over there, 
If you come across to your inspector menu, click on the node one next to it, find body entered, double click on that. So we want to connect it to here. Excellent. So this is our only bit of code we actually really need. Don't need an equal sign, don't know why I did that. So at the moment we're saying function on body entered pass. Well, this is the bit that we're going to use to detect if it's a player entering it. If it is the player, we're going to give our player some ammo. And then we're also going to get rid of the uh, collision shape itself uh, or the, the ammo itself, right? So that's the plan here. The way we're going to do that, nice and simple. Let me just copy in some code so I don't sit here for ages typing it. All right, and here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is have a look and see if our body is in the group player. So if we find our player here, you should remember that we added it to group player. So in our player script, in our ready function, there's this add to group player. There are ways of doing this up here and stuff as well, but we've just done it in code here. So if we go back to our ammo, we check and see if the body entering the area we've made is our player. If it is our player, then we wanna add 10 to our global ammo count. And then we want to print our global ammo in our debug just to make sure it's working. And then we're just going to get rid of the, the um, sprite from the screen so it doesn't stay there anymore. So that is pretty much it. So if we save that, go now to our world view and our 3D view of our world, right? What I might do here is delete a few guards or else they're going to mow me down before I get much done. Delete a few of these guards out. So... There we go, that's a bit more uh, acceptable. Now I'm gonna drag in some of my ammo.scene, right? So let's go and have a look at what that looks like when it's in there. Yeah, that's probably a, a relative size to our guard, isn't it? So let's uh, let's make in, maybe make a few of those. Um, whoops, not as a child. There we go, there's a few there. So, oh, did it as another child, what's wrong with me? All right, so I'm gonna just move these around now. Where have all of my spares gone? Okay, this one's over here, so let's just move it like that. Where's this one? There, where's this one? Over here. All right, so we've moved some, we've dropped some ammo in there, we've moved it around. The next step is gonna be to test it, to make sure that when we walk over those ammos that it adds to our global total and it also deletes from the scene. So let's save what we've done and let's test it out, I guess. All right, firstly, I'm gonna try and kill my uh, enemies here, otherwise they're gonna kill me. Whew, that got close, 20 left. All right, now I've got 79 ammo at the moment, 89. 99 and are they disappearing they're disappearing as well fantastic all right that's it we've made it work so let's uh close that one down and let's have a look at our must may might so you don't forget anything and also there'll be a challenge in there about what you might be able to use some of the other stuff on this sprite strip for to get ahead of the game so let's go and have a look at that now what you must get done to keep up, well, you're going to have to get the ammo scene uh, added as well as update the script for that. Um, and you're also going to have to do the updating you need to for the HUD. So updating your UI scene and script as well. What you may like to do is try and create the health collectible. I've included the health sprite in that little uh, item we used today. So see if you can work out how to update your health. And what you might like to do is think about how we would add the animated face to the HUD that shows images related to the player's health. So that's something we've still got to do. Maybe have a think about how you could do that. If you've got all of those things done, well, firstly, well done, but you should now have a Wolfenstein clone that allows you to fight with guards, collect ammo, kill and be killed, all whilst exploring your Nazi castle. In our next one, we're gonna do some more HUD improvements and minor tweaks, as well as uh, we might come back and make sure we've got things like the health and all that sorted in terms of pickups. My quote for this lesson is one of my favorites and I've said it many times, but it's from Epictetus and it is what is learned without pleasure is forgotten without remorse. Thanks guys and I'll catch you in the next one.